Yeah, so interesting to see that C9 immediately bans a rumble. Uh, we know that TSM loves this pick because Huni is arguably yeah. the best rumble, uh, maybe the best laning rumble in the league, according to some. And uh, Spika is also very comfortable on the pick. Akali as well. And with the Lulu first pick, oh, it is confirming. Oh. Let's go. For me, TSM wants to play front to back, standard team fight. What are the chances yeah. we get the Renekton and run back? I know a lot of people argue with me about this, but I feel like Oriana fits in so many different styles of team composition. Um, mm. So yeah, and then Aurelia last ban. Yeah, but okay. that's a fudge respect ban. Uh, is that C9's comps indexing very heavily Incredibly, on physical damage. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was like, and, this is an AD heavy team composition. Yeah. And TSM, in the current meta, when you have like four melee divers, a lot of them are not gonna itemize control yeah. mage. Like, yeah, Indra, there you yeah. go. It's a little bit more early game oriented than some of the other control mages, so it's still playing with that, you know, mid jungle 2v2 style a little bit more, but it is uh, a little bit surprising to see the Syndra reached for. Yeah, and I don't think this is a situation C9 wanted to be in. They're looking to set up a dive here. Level Booty three versus flash. level two. He's Blabber like is health. here. How much can they make this one happen? And they're waiting it out. The E is on cooldown. They're they not going for the knockup. Now they got perks, so is it going to be round two here? Blabber finds the knockup. Jace follows through. Huni flashes. Blabber drops the aggro. And perks is there as well. Fudge will lose his life, but Huni will lose so much of this experience. And look to set up some plays. And we're going to see this dive one more time. There's just no shot of doing this in a 2v1 dive, honestly, with Huni at full health and still having his flash. So they have to wait for Syndra, but it's such a big investment of time. You know, Perks did shove in mid lane, so that is working for them. They get the knockup here from Blabber. He tries to tank as long as he can. Perks comes in, the knockback into another combo from him. So it's pretty well executed. Blabber, though, I think he should have taken one more yeah, tower shot. If he took one more tower, he would have been out of mana, but they're looking for the return play. May have to flash here. We'll see if he can land the scatter of the week. Okay, flash done's gonna land in. Victor over the top, no way out for Perks. Well played to Spika to land everything. Too and little, too late. Whew. Nice try, Vulcan, to land the Q, but this is what happens when you don't land Crush it. Crush and clear out a ward. It's harder for Lulu to survive a gank, but if that doesn't happen, 2v2 is great. In, gonna hit Blabber, needs to ult away. Not gonna do so for a while, though. Exhaust onto him, has to flash back to safety. Does stay alive. Fuller over the top, though, slows three, and Perks on his way out, has to just barely live. Lost the going. shots come through. Lost wants in, gets ulted, does not find the kill, but King can't do the same either. Physic shot's going to land, but there's no more damage available on the Cloud9 side. No one is dead. Oh, oh, and it's not gonna have the evolve. Is Blabber. It, both AD carries are here for the fight. Blabber gets kicked out. Oh, Whoa. such a crazy wombo! Oh, that was a lot of damage. Oh my god. Looney saved Blabber Looney right there. Oh, oh my god, oh lost! My god. Wait, what? No way. How is Perks alive? Holy no shit, way. Lost. What just happened? Lost choked, dude. Lost choked. He did an auto. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a fuck up. He choked like so he hard, dead, dude. Went in for some damage. <laughs> yeah, like what? Look at his items, guys. He has he has the lowest AD value in the game, but like he's super fast, so he just needs the auto auto twice. Like I think he didn't realize he has such low AD. Yeah, thanks. Back back. Nah, we want to keep it here. We're gonna we're gonna cast some games. I don't want to get paused again. Yes. So, for what we understand, we have Chrono broken back to the point. The game is ready to resume, and indeed, we League shall. Legends. Woo! Much of like the zeal item rush in in a long time. Most ADs. Oh. Okay, kick flash puts Fudge, and he's gonna flash Q back out. The slows could it be pretty dangerous. Volibear over the top, and Spika kills him. But be careful because Blabber and Perks are here for reinforcements. Huni, we know he's flashless, has nowhere to hop to. Cloud I get the trade kill. Big advantage down there. So we can watch this one more time. Nicely set up, honestly, by Huni. Kick flash in onto Fudge. Fudge flashes, then jumps back to Huni, trying to create as much space as possible, but not able to close enough distance there to get away. But as Perks does arrive, Pony's always going to go down here. Spika able to walk out. You know, maybe Blabber could have actually just tried. Yeah, and I mean, it's Cloud9 playing to their stronger side. Now going to be another fight in the top as Fudge Way with out. a 1v2. Huge damage. Huni kick, follows the Q, gets the kill. Nicely done. There's a, a big cost to that. They're trying to make a play on this bottom side. They're looking for a potential dive. TP comes down. Power of Evil does have to flash to get away as Jace and... Don't even bother showing up. Just hard push on that side wave. Power of Evil, no flash. She is probably dead to rights here. We'll see. Yep. Ults the wave to knock it down a bit faster. And here comes the rest of the chase. You know he has no damage to kill anyone. He didn't expect to get the kill. Vulcan walks back to never have a chance of stealing it. Perks, a fair bit of pressure. The wave clear is not outstanding on TSM. As King and Perks walk up, W auto, Chunk goes the turret. Two to three now. To respect the fact that Baron is under fire and Loss is going to melt this thing fast. 
Walked through, mostly fog of war, but Vulcan seems to know. Sword Art waiting around. The fact that the Guardian Shield pot, they can see that, means they absolutely know Baron is being attacked right there. Mm -hmm. TSM flinched, though, but they have no control of the bottom side now. This is a Drake probably given away to Cloud9 off of the risk to go for the Baron. Hook's gonna land. They want this fight. Well, they one shot the Lulu. Syndra makes it so. Sword Art can't press a single button, but Vulivar comes right back in. Trade support for support, and now the front line is getting dangerous. Blabber goes right back in. Watsuni kicks in the squad. Jace's days are numbered, and it's a one for one, but Kog'Maw is not dead. The important part is that Loss is alive. They don't find the next bit of engage, but Perk still being alive makes it really tough to deal with a 3v3 on the map. Cloud9 feeling comfortable. Potential dragon, but this will be tough. Can they actually get over here? Speaker won't be in smite range in time if they burn it, but they don't know for sure where the positioning is. They could have burned it and gotten the smite. They didn't know that, though. It's in range. They're going to knock this one down. But how about the rest of it? Blabber knows he is going to die. They're going to leave him alone. I don't believe that Back means Baron. Baron, but they can try. No, they're gonna and you have the damage to actually knock this down very quickly with Cog, so I think they should yep. threaten this and at the very least force Cloud9 to show up and they do get that TP on their turn. The kick flash is how they got it. That's how they get the turn. The engage tools were so few and far between, but Huni's the one who finds it. And suddenly now, three versus five without a Syndra, this is gonna be tough. A miracle play from the Lee Sin top and TSM. Poised to grab it. No jungler. There's not even a true shot barrage. The most you can do is throw a Jace Q. Not even gonna get that opportunity. Spika secures it. That sick feeling in your stomach seeing that go down. This was a really smart force. They picked off Flabber off of this. And this TP is just simply too far forward, right? You needed a TP probably a further back towards mid lane and then come in. And Hooney makes him pay. Gets right on top of Perks as he arrives. The kick flash. Mid lane, we've got Hooney. Yeah, no one's gonna defend that one. Cloud9 running through the jungle. They're found out though, Vulcan. Yeah, anchors right back out. Pee ult, honestly, pretty reasonable. Gets some good poke. Perks and a half HP. Yeah. Mid lane outer is gone. Anchor in for Vulcan. Wants the stuns. Volibear ults away. Everyone stays alive. Blabber now in danger. Takes a lot of his health off, but everyone is at least going to survive this one. But we are burning cooldowns without so much as a kill. But it's not the champions that matter. It's the base that is falling around. He has the ability to get out. Has the, as you mentioned, stopwatch bot up, but flash and heal up as well. Here they go. Charlie has popped. Here comes the fight. Speak of frontlining. King has to go back over the wall. Vulcan force a flash away. They almost killed Volibear, but not just yet. Now Blabber walks back in, but he's not easily going to stay alive. Burns his own stopwatch, but he's going to be left to the wolves. He does not live. Burns the flash. It doesn't matter. And back in goes Power of Evil nearly. Shutting down the support of Vulcan. Won't so much have Huni win. Huni's been a big part of the picks that have gotten them the Barons and everything else. And now we might see Cloud9 try again. Baron is alive. Both teams have two Drakes. And still, the top jungle is the area of contention. True Shot Barrage hits zero. It's untouched. Absolutely. It's just not going to happen. And now TSM on the Baron again here. Power of Evil zoning. Huni in position. It's two men on the Baron, and they're trying to force the hand. They want C9 to hard commit. And then they will likely turn for the fight here, but Power of is very second off. Oh! kicks in, goodbye to Syndra. Beautifully done, and now the rest of them will fall. 3-0 TSM, get out of here, Cloud9. Loss is ready to chase them down. Hootie there for good measure, Blabber ults. Does it matter? Of course it does not. 4-0 TSM in the fight, and it's time to walk it down mid. Yeah. I mean, in that case, it's just about, mistake, it's about figuring out, like, which one you're going to go with. Like, that's that's when kind of you need to ask your teammates what they would want oh. and then listen. Ooh. 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 Hootie again Another with a great Volibear kick. Another slam dunk. King is so fucking dead. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, he is beyond. I mean, this game has just been over. Let's for fucking minutes. go, Volibear. I think the game this was over. So I think the game was over when, <laughs> it, when C9 didn't snowball by 10 minutes. Like, I really think they wanted to... What a kick! Hooney around the Baron has been pure magic for TSM. Finding perks both times. The critical member, he's going <laughs> in. He wants the kills. Flash in for the ace for the KDA. Not going to fight any more of that one, but certainly these Nexus turrets are dropping rapidly. Second one's going to fall as well. Cloud9 will not find the defense. They wanted to win through top, but it was TSM who did it. Hooney, magical in every single team fight. The Nexus falls. They got to feel good about this one. They take their time. Hooney, magnificent play today as TSM retains sole control of first place. And those kicks on perks, especially the second one, yeah. was sick. You know, that is, is really the nail in the coffin because 
Perks is the only guy who really has a shot of he finds that miracle team fight where he one shots the victory, one shots the Kogma. Maybe they have a chance, but it felt like Cloud9 never even got off the ground on this one. You know, they drafted for early game dominance. They drafted a composition that really has no shot in the 5v5. They couldn't get ahead. It was about Spika. It was about Huni. Proactive on that top side, attacking the Jace, getting the kills, and Cloud9 winning through bottom lane as well. The 2v2 is going great right, for them yeah. there, very far ahead. Thank you, Freak. Going into this game, we had a lot of time to talk about the composition, so I want to start right there with you, Lost. We saw the Kogma Lulu bot lane come out. We had PoE on some comfort in the mid lane. Why was this draft here against C9 today? Um, I think just across the whole world, there's a lot of Lulu and Karma Power, and they left up Lulu for us today. So I think naturally we first picked it, and the best champion to go with Lulu is Kogma, in my opinion. So I think this was a very comfortable matchup for us to play in, and um, you, we got the free scale into mid late game. So I think, yeah, just a pretty good matchup for us. And that did mean for you, Sword Art, mm. that you had to play less of the Leona and Rel, this time going on to the Lulu. I've heard that it is a joke in the LPL that a lot of Lulus oh. like to face check because <laughs> of that. How was it switching over for you? I think that it's not that hard to to play the game because uh, Spica helped me do the vision a lot, and also mm. our coaching staff uh, worked really hard to help us uh, play better in mid and late game. So it it makes me easier to play mid late game, uh, even if I not play the tank support. Yeah, everyone in the mid and late game from TSM as a whole were playing together so well. Lost a lot of that seemed to be from even Spika being able to track Blabber when it came to the game. How much of that was a focus to make sure that he stayed out of it? I think C9 do play around Blabber's timings a lot. So I think that kind of played into a, like a big reason as to why we came out victorious today. So yeah, you know, big props to our team for setting up well in terms of our team fights, you know, how we executed throughout the game. So I'm glad I got the boys with me. And the boys are still in that number one spot mm -hmm. for TSM because of this victory. Sword Art, what has it been like, TSM, holding on to that spot here in summertime? I think, uh, yeah, when, when, when I came to here, I also wish that we can, we can make um, uh, LCS uh, region have more impactful uh, in, in international stage. And also, also yeah, because uh, play, uh, play with the play at LCS is a uh, really different, um, different, different feeling. Yeah, because um, because uh, I uh, I have to communicate with another language, and also I have to understand each of my player what's their play style. So I think play play at here is really, I, I need to improve a lot. And also, I trust my teammates, so I think we can play better a lot. Well, TSM as a whole, working on that trust, on that development since you arrived, mm. lost, now that we are a bit deeper into the season, how much do you feel TSM has evolved from the start back in spring until now? I think in most of our victories or just recent games, we're still looking a little shaky. We're not kind of you know, blowing out the games and making it so like we're an extremely dominant team right now. Obviously, we'd like for it to be that way, but uh, I think that just shows we still have a lot of room to improve. Mm. We're always here to track the improvement, but also the W's for TSM. Congratulations again to both of you on the victory. Thank, Thank you, you very much. We're going to continue breaking down this game on the other side of the break. So for more on TSM versus Cloud9, stay tuned.